Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Drobo Broadcast Network. My name is Mario Blandini at Drobo, and today's discussion is about protecting a combination of servers. Hey, face it, folks have uh, both physical and virtual machines today, and there are approaches and architectures for protecting those heterogeneous environments. You'll hear that word heterogeneous quite a lot today. Joining us is special guest Jerome Buteau, who is a senior virtual engineer at Acronis. How are you doing today, Jerome? Good. How are you doing, Mario? Doing fantastic. Uh, as we go here to the abstract slide, there are trends like virtualization and cloud that even amongst small and medium businesses, they're a reality. And as part of the IT architecture, folks are looking for the right way to go about doing things. And while there is virtualization, you probably agree, Jerome, that uh, there are going to be a continued need for physical servers and on-premises storage, i.e. the people are heterogeneous. Are you seeing that same thing in the customers that you consult with? Absolutely. The, m most customers do try to have a lot of virtual environment, but in reality, there is definitely a mixed environment, whether it be a physical server, virtual server, Windows servers, Linux server. It's, it's always a mix of different things, different technology. So it's extremely important to understand and have a solution that can deal with heterogeneous environments. Right. And uh, it's our opinion that the best data protection strategies for SMBs is one that would work across both physical and virtual, as well as cloud in the future, uh, because you're very likely to have combinations of all those sort of things in the architecture. Now, you work for Acronis, which is a leading vendor of DR and data protection solutions across all of those environments. Maybe give us a little bit of information about yourself. So I've been uh, in the IT industry managing data centers and, and, and setting up backup infrastructures for our end users for the past six years and in the IT industry for about 10. And um, I've, I've dealt with a lot of different OSs, a lot of different projects, whether it be for the small enterprises or the larger enterprises. Great. Well, let's t uh, keep things focused around small and medium business because the audience at Drobo tends to focus in that area. A couple points that are worth making would be that heterogeneous environments require a specific way of thinking, and we'll get into some of the reasons behind that from a data protection standpoint. And naturally, it's never a bad time to reduce uh, both the cost as well as the amount of time it takes you to do storage in uh, a data protection strategy. Therefore, there are some new technologies that you can look at for doing data protection there. In terms of what the requirements are for a small and medium business, certainly recovery is the most important thing. And uh, maybe you can give us some comments, Jerome, about recovery. Uh, it, wouldn't, wouldn't it be true that being able to recover the stuff easily is just as important as how easy it is to back it up? Uh, the, uh, absolutely. <laughs> Everyone talks about backup, but really the most important piece is really the recovery piece. If you can't recover, what's the point of having a backup? And, and, and having the ability to recover is, is a number of things. First of all, it's knowing how to recover, because if you have a backup, you need to know how to get that recovery done. But it's also knowing what types of recovery you have to perform. There's a, a file-based recovery where you can get access to specific files, which is probably more the day-to-day -day scenario type recoveries. And then there's the disaster recovery where if the machine fails completely, how do you get that full machine back up and running as fast as possible? Well, in terms of the way of deploying backup software, we'll talk about a couple different things there. There's the concept of having agents on every system, which is very much uh, what you would have in a physical server backup. And then this concept of agentless, uh, which is fairly new. Maybe, Jerome, at a very high level, you could tell us the difference between agents and agentless. Yeah, so this is something that is really a leading due to the virtualization piece, the virtualization aspect that's, that's helped new technology grow, specifically when dealing with virtual environments, you can take advantage of VMware APIs, which allow you to take a snapshot of a virtual machine without necessarily having an agent inside of that machine. And that allows you to offload resources from a primary machine to a secondary machine. So in that matter, it really helps offload resources and, and take advantage of, of a centralized resource and, and, and and really optimize the backup process. The agent approach it really has been something that's been in the industry for a really long time. So it's very powerful, very proven, and, and a lot of people still use it today, but more and more people are trying to find an agentless approach 
wherever possible. In, in some cases, it is a requirement to use agents, uh, but if possible, agentless will give a lot of benefits. And we'll get into some of the specifics there. Uh, naturally, uh, having facilities built in that can assist you with migration is another point to consider when selecting a backup strategy for a small business because over time you'd naturally expect to be migrating some of those physical servers, which today may not be good candidates to migrate, but in the future very well could be. Cost effectiveness is always something that's a requirement when it comes to looking at this from a small and medium business point of view, given that uh, there's always some fantastic ways of doing it that enterprise customers might be able to take advantage of, but uh, not necessarily for small businesses, uh, depending on the amount of investment that's needed. So let's uh, take a, a step further into the architecture. To do a solution like this, you really don't need a whole lot more than you may already have in place. For example, your servers, your network, and your WAN are almost always in place today. If you don't have a second site, well, then uh, that part of it on the right-hand side wouldn't apply to you. But certainly having the ability to do backup doesn't require a whole lot more than you may already have. Uh, it's our belief at Drobo that you have to have reliable storage that's a lower cost than your primary tier if you're going to do backup to disk or do off-site backup. It just doesn't make sense to have the same cost per gigabyte, cost per terabyte for your backup disk than it does for your primary, and that's uh, something Drobo can help out with there. In terms of the backup software, you want to select one that supports heterogeneous requirements. There are some out there that are great for physical, some that are uh, good for virtual machines and exclusive to virtual machines, and then there are products out there that do both. Now, deduplication is something we, we talk about on this slide, Jerome. Maybe you can tell us why it's important for disk-based backup, more than just uh, reducing the amount of storage that's on the disk itself. Yeah, so deduplication is a, is a technology that helps in numerous ways. Uh, deduplication has really been a stronghold on, on the enterprise market, but now it's coming more and more to the, the, the SMB market, and it helps in many ways. The fir first is obviously that it will help reduce the amount of storage that you need, but and that's that's great because especially when you do backups, you may do the same backup or backup of similar data over and over again. But additionally, you get a lot of benefits with regards to the the network bandwidth utilization. If you do deduplication, then only one set of blocks gets sent over the network. And if you're talking about a wide area network or you're sending your data offsite to a second location, having uh, less data to send over those that network will make it a lot quicker and a lot uh, faster to get uh, back up and running. Another reason why it's an important part of the basic architecture and something to plan for ahead of time, because even if your project may be to do a disk-based backup locally, your local copy certainly is going to satisfy the vast majority of your restore requests. Uh, a lot of folks really want to have that off-site backup for that extra protection from disasters, and that's probably the harder one to do, but uh, we wanted to point out that with the right architecture, you can easily add on that off-site piece, even if you just start with the on-site backup. So, hey, maybe, Jerome, you can let us know from a restore request perspective, what is the percentage that you've seen working with customers for pulling from their local copy versus having to go to their off-site copy to get it? Do most of the restore requests come on-site, and where, where does your off-site come into play? Well, a majority of the requests are going to be from an on-site restore perspective. Someone deletes a file, needs access to that file from yesterday. Someone has a problem with their system. They need to have access to their, their system, and you have to recover the full system back onto another system. So that's all from a local standpoint. But the important part is being also able to recover in case of a full system failure and that does happen a little bit, probably more in the order of 10 or 20 percent of the time. But the impact of being able to restore from a DR site is extremely critical because if your if your site were to go down, being able to give, get back up and running quickly is important for for the business. You, there's a lot of statistics out there regarding um, the the viability of a business after it loses a significant amount of data, and, and a lot of times uh, a business will go out of business. Uh, if they cannot be up and running in, in a few days. Yeah, I think the statistic is more than 40% would simply cease operation after a major IT disaster, which is uh, pretty bad. Certainly worth the insurance policy of putting in place 
a heterogeneous backup solution that can cover them both on-site as well as off-site. So let's talk about these requirements a little bit further. A reliable recovery has to be number one. And uh, I think that what some people are often confused by is the concept of full backup versus incremental, bare metal uh, restore versus uh, file data restore. Talk to us a little bit about what someone needs to think about when they're doing those backups. So there's a number of things. The first thing you want to think about is how am I going to get the files back? How am I going to get, uh, if someone deletes a file, if the CEO deletes a file, how am I going to be able to get these files back up on my system or on the CEO system? So that's the first thing to think about. The second thing to think about is what if my system goes down? What if this laptop, what if this server, what if this desktop goes down? What will it take for me to be back up and running? Am I going to have to build a system? And how long is it going to take me to be back up and running? Is it going to take me an hour? Is it going to take me five hours? Is it going to take me a day? And is it acceptable for it to take a day or an hour or two days or three days or a week? And, and you need to find a solution that fits these requirements. And then uh, beyond just single machine failure, what if the full office goes down? How how will my recovery work and what happens if the recovery fails? One of the things that, that you have to think about is uh, recoveries, uh, you, you perform a recovery, uh, what if that backup that you have is not good? Maybe you need to be uh, have access to the backup from the day before because maybe the one that you have had a virus on it. So you need to make sure you keep in mind both the aspect of being able to recover the, what you can recover but also what could impact that recovery process, whether it be from a hardware perspective or also from a, uh, a software, what is on the backup perspective. Well, maybe you can tell us then, Jerome, about uh, bare metal uh, versus uh, just doing backup of files and when you would want to use either or, because we have a bullet here about dependency on specific types of machines or hardware. Certainly, you'd expect uh, there to be some dependencies there from a bare metal perspective, but can you do bare metal restore to a different type of hardware? So this is this is a great great topic, and this is something that's been changing in the industry for the past ten years. Uh, the the historical approach to backup and recovery, uh, BMR recovery, has been that you back up some data, so files, and then if your machine were to fail, you install the operating system and then recover the data. And this is a very time-consuming process, but this is an approach that is uh, successful for the most part, but there are some uh, challenges with that process in that it's, it's very time-consuming and there's some Microsoft-specific things that, that sometimes you lose when you rebuild the operating system. The bare metal approach uh, would typically take a, an approach where it would back up the system state or the full disk where when you recover, instead of having to install an OS, it's actually going to recover the whole uh, application stack as well, which means that you get everything in one recovery step. And this greatly simplifies the recovery process in terms of operation it takes to perform the operation, but also in terms of time. Uh, it, it, an operation where you have to install Windows uh, can take a, a number of hours, especially after you get past all the updates and installing the application. This can take hours, if not days. But if you have a bare metal approach, you can be up and running in a number of hours, which drastically uh, reduces the amount of time, but also the amount of stress. Uh, typically, when you have a system down, uh, everyone's breathing down your neck, and you want to be able to get up and running as fast as possible. No doubt about it. And we say here, simple is better than complex. Uh, getting the backups reliable certainly is important, but having that recovery be as quick and simple as possible is important, and I appreciate you going through the detail there of uh, when you might want to choose either. So far, we've talked about uh, how those uh, solutions work, and if you want to leverage heterogeneous backup, a solution that can do both virtual machines and physical machines and give you a similar level of service for restoring those, there are a couple concerns, and we want to uh, talk about those uh, up front as you might think about your planning. Uh, specifically, the cost of protecting and expanding storage set, uh, as the data grows, the cost goes up. Uh, that's something that uh, can be addressed by having disk-based backups that can scale and making sure that you use deduplication to reduce the amount of storage they're actually using. 
Deduplication will certainly help, but having a second tier of storage, which is of a lower cost than your primary tier, your tier one, would give you those cost benefits and the ability to scale. From a complexity standpoint and over the recovery, there are a couple of things that are built into modern solutions that can help you out. And it's good to make note of those because they become uh, specifically helpful in heterogeneous solutions. And uh, it's the concept of disk imaging uh, for a faster recovery time of the entire system. I'll let you go into that in a little bit more detail here, Jerome, on the next slide. And when it comes to evolving from physical to virtual, maybe we can talk about that really quick. Migration. Can you use backup tools to do those migrations, or do you have to manually go through and migrate, you know, bring a system down, move the files over, and bring it back up? What role does backup software play, uh, potentially, in helping you with migrations? Well, a, a good backup tool is able to recover, and ideally it's able to recover to a different hardware. So if you have a good solution that can backup, it can also allow you to backup and recover to a different hardware, and more importantly, to a virtual machine. And this is critical because it really helps um, in your migration process to a virtual environment. It's, it's very beneficial to be able to get to a virtual, but also maybe for a recovery perspective in the sense that if you want to be able to uh, get up and running quicker, it may be easier and faster to recover that physical to a virtual as opposed to recovering it to a physical machine. And that's great. If you're a heterogeneous environment, it implies that you already have some physical and some virtual what you're saying is your virtual environment can help you with a faster recovery, if not just to get the application back up, and maybe you can easily migrate it back to a, a new physical server because the, the application needs more horsepower. Is that a viable scenario? Absolutely. Cool. So let's go a little bit deeper then into disk imaging technology and give people an idea of what it means. Yeah, so disk imaging technology will operate instead of at the data level, so the files, the OS, the database level, it's going to operate deeper at the sector block level and identify which blocks are on the disk, capture all these blocks so that you have the full system in a, in a backup. This is great because when you recover, you do not have to recover every single piece of that backup, so you don't have to recover the data, the OS the application, the, the user, instead you just tell it to recover the sectors, all those blocks, and then you just let it go. This is extremely efficient operation because recovering all the blocks does not require user interaction. On top of this, this type of technology also allows for other technology which allows you to recover to different, the similar hardware. So if you want to go from one piece of hardware to another piece of hardware, that is something that uh, disk imaging can allow you to do. And there is also uh, technology surrounding disk imaging te technology, which can allow you to create disaster recovery plan. One of the things that um, people create when they think about how to deal with a disaster and being back up and running as fast as possible is to create a step-by-step -step plan on how to be up and running as fast as possible and what steps are required. And uh, the disaster recovery plan will allow you to have this plan in place uh, that will walk you through that process. And as we see below there, this is an example of what the uh, recovery plan may look like. It looks like a, a fairly straightforward process. This type of thing is automated in the software, or do you have to document this externally? So, so in, in some software, Acronis included, this would be an automated process. In fact, this is something that's emailed to the administrator every single time a backup takes place, so that way you have the most up-to-date information on how to be up and running as fast as possible. That's great. Part of making recovery uh, simple and uh, making sure it's reliable as well. On to selective restore. Naturally, you want to be able to get back from a disaster, but I think you'd agree that most of the requests are like the one you mentioned earlier. File is accidentally deleted or you have a virus or something has a, a minimal impact on a small number of systems and you really just need a couple files back. How does uh, modern backup software make it easier to do selective file restore? There is a technology surrounding the file restore, which is a, a concept of a catalog. And the catalog is, is much like what it sounds like. Essentially, it's, it's, it's a repository which keeps track of all the data that's been backed up. So it'll, it would drill into every single file that you backed up and create a list, a searchable list, of all this data. 
this allows you to search for a specific file so that let's say for example you need my word document you can look up my word document and it will list you all the copies of my word documents that you've made in the past so all the backups for that specific document and then you can get to it easily and a, a good catalog will span not only just one machine but across all your machines so that you can find any file that was created with that name in your environment. Great, and this is something that would allow you to select a specific version as well. Uh, you talked about the idea that you may need to go to the day before. Uh, having this cataloging technology benefits you by giving you an easier to select from list. Important as well is that it can also drill down to email, so if you want to be able to have a specific email. And, and we talk about a heterogeneous solution what a lot of people are interested in is having one solution that can both do this ability to recover specific files but also have this bare metal technology and having this hybrid solution is something that's very important because it simplifies the process there's only one solution it makes uh, the admin's job a lot easier when you don't have to deal with multiple solutions uh, we agree and as we go to this uh, slide here putting it together putting your own heterogeneous backup solution together. We talked about the concepts as well as the overall architecture with a combination of Acronis Backup and Recovery 11 and Drobo, specifically our file sharing storage for business. Uh, you can create a solution that is a fundamentally lower cost for disk-based backup than your existing storage may be and provide all of the capabilities that we described uh, in today's solution for an affordable cost that most small and medium businesses can afford. And what's really important to understand is that this architecture not only provides you the fastest possible recovery for local on-site, on-premises backups, because it's disk-based, not tape-based, uh, and with the tools that Jerome described, you can make recoveries very quickly. It also provides you with the integrated deduplication and ability to uh, have off-site backup just the same. And uh, Drobo provides a integrated facility Drobo Sync in our model B800FS that can replicate between two sites, but you could also manage that from a Cronus by having your backups uh, staged then at a secondary site so that you can follow those same recovery plans in the event of uh, needing to do a restoration or recovery at the remote site. Now this is a combination of both the virtual edition and the advanced server Jerome, and that's to cover your combination of virtual machines as well as physical servers, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Some people think agent is a bad word, but in this case, talk about this backup agent that's on the physical server or the agentless proxy and where those two play in the solution. Yeah, so, so a backup agent would be a, a, a really a, an, an agent, something that would allow you to create a backup, and you would install these on your physical machines that you want to back up, whether they be Windows or Linux. And then the agentless proxy uh, is usually a virtual appliance, but it can also be installed on a Windows machine, would take care of performing a backup of the virtual machine. And you only need one of these to take care of your virtual environment. For more information, we'll have a detailed how-to guide uh, at uh, drobo.com slash acronis with information on how to create uh, this sort of backup architecture for yourself using the combination of the products. It's time to take some questions now, Jerome. And uh, we started on it on the previous slide. When is it the right time to have an agent on a physical server? Is it for every physical server that you have an agent, or uh, do you ever use agentless with a physical server? So for a physical server, you definitely want an agent on these machines. Uh, the agent allows you to go a, little, a lot deeper when you perform the backups so that you can make sure that you have the fastest and most efficient backup and more flexible backup where you can both recover the full system and also the files uh, on that system. And this type of agent's not required for virtual machines then because uh, in that case, the, the virtual machine can be recreated just from uh, the information available to the, the centralized agent, right? That's correct. In the case of virtual machines, you would not need this agent unless you, you, you needed some type of um, additional uh, application level uh, backup. In, in, in most cases, probably about 90 to 95% of the cases, you do not need an agent for the virtual environments. 
and uh, you just use a proxy so that a virtual appliance uh, that would take care of backing up the whole virtual infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that Acronis offers virtual backup solutions as well. So is there a time when having a dedicated virtual backup software is useful in this architecture or for a small business uh, is uh, a better approach to uh, have a heterogeneous backup tool? Well, a lot of people say that they're working towards a all virtual environment. The, the reality is it's a very difficult process to get to a point where you are 100 percent virtual uh, so in, in most cases again it's it's uh, it's people do end up having both a physical and virtual environment and in, in, in those cases you do want a hybrid solution there are a few cases where a just a virtual solution would work work well let's say for example if you have completely migrated to a all virtual environment and 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 been able to completely forego that having a physical ser Windows server in, in your environment, in those cases, having a dedicated virtual solution mm. is ideal. Right. We already talked about backups being made directly to off-site storage. That's certainly possible with us architecture. But in terms of buying a backup server with some physical hardware, or maybe just redeploying one of your old physical servers as the backup server, when is it that you go for a dedicated backup server versus having just a virtual machine where you run that software, Jerome? So for the most part, you can run everything as a virtual machine. Uh, it's, it's, it's only when the resource requirements get so high that uh, it will eat up all the resources of a physical machine that you have to consider looking at a physical machine. And in, in the case of a Cronus, uh, that it really does not happen unless you have hundreds of thousands of virtual machines. Um, so in, in, in the case of SMBs, really you could run everything as a virtual machine and you would not need, never need an actual physical machine to manage your backups. Great, thanks for that advice. That's uh, good in terms of putting together the ideal target solution here and something that's helped save you cost too because you don't need physical hardware for that backup server. Let's take a couple questions off the internet. Question for you, Jerome, about Hyper-V. We talked about VMware here. Is the Acronis Backup and Recovery 11 solution something that works with Hyper-V as well? Absolutely. Uh, Hyper-V is another of the virtualization solution which provides APIs uh, required to be able to do agentless backups. And, and Acronis does support Hyper-V as well. So okay, great. You, you can do the same, same operation, same agentless approach with Hyper-V that you can with VMware. With regard to VMware, if folks are using the free version, ESXi, they're not using a paid for version, uh, it's a great question. Can they take advantage of this agentless backup or is that something uh, that's only available to folks who have a licensed paid for version of VMware? That's a great question. And this is a question I get all the time. Uh, what happens is the ESXi free version uh, disables these APIs that allow you to perform agentless backups. So, so technology that rely on these APIs, that rely on being able to do agentless backups, cannot perform a backup of these uh, these machines that are running ESXi free. That being said, you could still install agents inside of the virtual machines and still take advantage of a, a sector level, image level backup of the virtual machine without necessarily having access to the APIs. So it's something to think about. It's it, Would it be possible for you to start uh, with an Acronis solution with ESXi, but once you upgraded to paid for versions of VMware, you could then start taking advantage of the agent list? Yeah, yeah. This, uh, our, the solution is built to grow. So if you decide to use agent at first and then later on move on to agent list, when, when you do get access to the API, this is something that's a very easy process to, to get accomplished. Well, we have a ton of questions here, Jerome, so it's great that you're available to answer a couple more of these. We'll keep them rolling. Uh, another question is the catalog uh, that allows you to do file level recovery. Does that show everything that's local and off-site or just the stuff that's on-premises? Maybe another way to ask that, do you need two different catalogs, one for your on-site or one for, one for your off-site, or do you have a common catalog that shows you everything that you've backed up? This is a great question as well. Uh, so the, the catalog 
is a central repository that will keep track of all the locations where you sent backups. So whether it be on-site or off-site, it will actually keep track of both locations. And that's an advantage in our architecture of using the Acronis to do the date of movement uh, between sites. As I mentioned before, Drobo does have a facility, DroboSync, built into our model B800FS that allows you to replicate between two sites, but then you'd have to go looking at those backups individually because Acronis would have no knowledge of them having been moved there. By using Acronis to stage then the backups to multiple sites, you have full visibility through the catalog facility, which is a recommendation uh, that we have here, though you could choose to do it both ways. Another question, Jerome, uh, how do people back up RDMs or raw device mappings uh, of uh, virtual machines? Is, is there a special consideration required there? So the RDM devices typically, and, and there's multiple types of RDM devices, in, in some cases you can create a VMware snapshot of these machines of these disks, but in some cases you cannot. In, in the cases where you cannot, uh, if you cannot create a VMware snapshot, you have to rely on an agent-based technology, which you could install inside of the guest, inside of that virtual machine, and create a sector-level backups through that agent to create a backup of that machine. Uh, so this is also another one of those cases where the agent would be beneficial in that it would allow you to create the sector-level backup that you can recover anywhere but from inside the VM so that you capture your whole VM instead of just capturing the ones that the, the section of that virtual machine that's not on the RDM. That's a great clarification and it helps us answer the next question about uh, ABR 11, whether it requires an agent for a virtual machine. Uh, in summary, uh, a virtual machine does not require an agent. You can go agentless, but there are some select cases, such as the RDM case that you mentioned where you're unable to take a snapshot, where you might need an agent. So in any case, heterogeneous backup helps here. Great, so uh, virtual machines that have SQL or Exchange. You talked about Exchange and being able to uh, recover individual emails, uh, Jerome. What about SQL and how does uh, database work if it's running inside a VM with your agentless backup? So it, it depends on what you're looking for. Uh, an, an agentless approach would give you the ability to recover the full system, meaning you can recover the database entirely or the full virtual machine. If, if you're looking to drill a little deeper into the actual uh, SQL instances, then you would need an agent approach so that you have the ability to drill a little deeper into the application stack rather than dealing with the, the virtualization um, level, which is a VM level backup. So what do you recommend to customers normally then, Jerome? Because it looks like you can do both. Do you do both for different scenarios or do, do you tend to, for a smaller business, focus only on recovering the full machine uh, because that's kind of a standard way of doing it? How do you normally consult with customers who are uh, small businesses? So it, it would depend on a number of things. The first thing would be how important and critical is it that this database uh, data is is backed up. Uh, it, if you have a, an application that requires on the database, that does not necessarily mean that you need to recover individual pieces of that database if the database has a problem. Uh, so, so first is you have to look at the application and see how important it is to, to have this functionality. Then the second part is um, is this something that you really need as an SMB? Do, do you need to be able to recover individual pieces or do you just want to be able to be back up and running as fast as possible regardless of um, being able to pull specific pieces from that, from that backup? Okay. Yeah, and, and, but in most cases for the SMB, they do tend to uh, look at an agentless um, approach rather than drilling deeper into the database itself because it's an easier and quicker solution for them. Right. Uh, a related question that's specific to VM proxy backups. Can you, with, a, with uh, ABR 11, restore single files and applications from a VM proxy backup? Uh, yes, absolutely. So the, the backups, whether the agent or agentless, so using a proxy or not using a proxy, have the same functionality in that it can recover the full system or it can recover individual files. 
All right, let's go into some rapid fire uh, Q&A here. Does uh, ABR 11 work with Red Hat Linux? Absolutely, yes. We can, uh, we can back up a Linux system, whether it's Red Hat, Debian, SUSE, Ubuntu. Uh, our requirement is actually not on the distribution, but rather on the kernel. Uh, we use a kernel level uh, module, uh, which is uh, available for kernels 2.4.18 and above, which really dates back to any distribution that comes from about 2001 and above. Would this be for Intel only, Jerome, or also non-Intel platforms? This would be for all x86 based, so Intel, AMD, but not the other architectures. Okay. In terms of incremental slash differential backups of VMs, uh, how should people think of that? Uh, does uh, Acronis offer the uh, benefits of incremental differential backup by default, or is it something they need to think about when configuring the product? So the, the product supports it, and it's something that comes inherently with the product. And when you set up a backup job, you have either you have a couple options. One will guide you through uh, identifying when to create foals and differentials. So for example, you can select to do a grandfather, father, son scheme, which does a full backup every month, differential every week, incremental every day, and can set up a retention scheme. Or you can set it up manually to have the ultimate flexibility of deciding exactly when you want a differential to take place or when you want an incremental to take place. All right. Uh, well, there's a question here about off-site backup uh, and how do you take that backup off-site if you're using a Drobo. What we would recommend is that you deploy a second Drobo hardware at your alternate site and you could either use the DroboSync facility built into the B800FS or uh, to maintain management uh, under a common catalog and uh, have easier restore, you could use the Acronis backup server to uh, make the staging or move the data between sites. With the deduplication built in, it can do that efficiently over a wide area network. And uh, by having them in both places, you wouldn't have to manually rotate media off-site. One of the easiest ways to make it repeatable and reliable is to take away that off-site rotation type of uh, part of the solution. Therefore, having the ability to do that uh, and stage them overnight or uh, during off hours across your WAN really does uh, make it a lot easier of a solution uh, and make sure that the latest stuff's always out there versus having to rely on the schedule by which you rotate that media off-site. All right, some more questions about uh, the uh, deduplication part of the solution. It is part of the Acronis software. So uh, when uh, doing the uh, commit of the data to the disk, the Acronis uh, backup solution would deduplicate data and reduce the amount of data going onto the disk. And as Jerome mentioned, also reduce the amount of data going across the wire to the disk at your other location. So there's no dedupe built into the Drobo itself. Uh, the Drobo provides uh, easy to use and scalable storage uh, that's really affordable. Uh, and the Acronis solution makes it even better by offering deduplication. Now, we, we have tons of questions going, so hopefully, Jerome, you have some more time. We'll just keep the Q&A going here because it's some great stuff. If you have an image uh, level backup that uses an agent, would you ab be, have the ability to restore individual files if you were using ESXi? Because you mentioned that we, you can't do the agentless with the free version of ESXi, but uh, if you did a image level using an agent, would you still have the ability to recover individual files, or are you limited to recovering just simply the whole machine? Absolutely. You would definitely be able to recover individual files from a sector level, image level backup, whether it's agent or agentless. Either case, uh, you have that functionality. So the point is that no matter how you uh, do the backup, you have the same sort of restore capabilities. Your choice whether to do an agent would depend on uh, the points that you made earlier, whether you're running the free version of ESXi or whether you have a physical server or you have the need uh, with an RDM as an example to ha have an agent there. So heterogeneous backup gives you the flexibility to do all of this. It may sound complicated, but uh, I think, Jerome, you'd agree that having the flexibility really makes it better because there's really no two environments that are exactly the same. Most everybody has these corner cases they need to think about, right? That's right. 
are there any differences for a MySQL database versus SQL? Is something different in a Cronus backup from MySQL or uh, would it operate the same way that we described previously with uh, Microsoft SQL? It, it will work exactly the same way. Um, when you do a sector level backup, we capture all the blocks on the system, which includes a SQL database. Uh, MySQL, um, usually on Linux, works very similar in that you want to capture all the blocks and you have the transactions. There are some additional things that, that Cronus can do in the back end to make sure application consistency, whether it be turning on VSS or being able to create a database using commands before and after we create a snapshot of that machine. One question that people have is around bandwidth. Uh, how much bandwidth do you need between two sites in order to have an effective off-site backup? And I guess uh, the answer would be that uh, it depends on the size of the data. Do most small businesses have the ability uh, to do you know, a, a, a sync of their uh, nightly backups off-site? And if so, how much uh, bandwidth do you recommend that they get, Jerome? In some cases, they, they do have the hardware, the, the necessary pieces to be able to get the bandwidth to go from site to site on a nightly basis. But for, for the most, most cases, it, it, it may not be a nightly thing. It may be something that is performed on, on a weekly basis. And uh, in those cases, what you have to take into account is how much data do you have, how much data do you want to have at an off-site location, and how much bandwidth is required, and how much bandwidth you have available. And um, it's, it's not a black or white solution where uh, yes, you have the bandwidth. No, you do not. A lot of times you may be able to do some data and not all. And, and having a good sense of your uh, recovery uh, point objective in case of disaster is, is a critical step in being able to identify uh, how much data you want to send off-site. Right. I think for a lot of folks, if you're dealing with uh, T1 or a very small connection at your local site, certainly that's going to be restrictive. And there is a minimum amount of bandwidth that's required. We're finding that a lot of uh, small customers have access to uh, some Metro Ethernet solutions in their environment. And that if they don't have their own second site, they might be working with a reseller or uh, some sort of other provider that can provide them access to some equipment at a secondary site. So it's with that that uh, we often find small businesses can do it because the partner that you're working with to help set up your network between the two sites would be there to help make sure you have enough capacity or bandwidth between the two sites to effectively do off-site backup. With deduplication, it certainly makes it a lot easier. And as you mentioned, Jerome, if you're doing it on a regular basis, the amount of data you have to uh, transfer is small because there's not a great deal of change on a daily basis. And if you're doing it uh, on a less frequent basis, you have a longer time period during which to transfer that information between the two sites. So this is all great stuff. For folks who want to go a little deeper into how that might work, uh, Drobo holds daily live demos of our B800FS solution at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, which you can go to drobo.com slash live and look into how that could work and ask some detailed questions about your specific environment for our live engineers there doing that demonstration. All right, so as a confirmation, we're talking about a Cronus backup and recovery version 11 and Drobo model B800FS, our file sharing storage for business. Uh, I want to wrap up by saying that from an SMB perspective, there's going to be physical servers uh, for many folks, and that's why heterogeneous backup is something they should be looking into because it would uh, offer them protection of both of those. And uh, I think you agreed, Jerome, that Acronis and Drobo make for a great solution for heterogeneous backup based on the capabilities built into uh, ABR11 and the fact that Drobo is very easy to use and a lower cost storage than you may be using already in your environment. So it makes disk-based backup much more practical. Most importantly, there's an additional information uh, section as well as a 15-day free trial. If you want to try some of these solutions for yourself, you can get access to the Acronis software on a 15-day free trial basis at acronis.com slash enterprise slash download. And Jerome, how long would someone expect to take to get this up and running in their environment once they downloaded the software? Usually it's a matter of a, of a few minutes, probably about, about 10 to 15 minutes, and then they can have backups up and running. 
So it's a very, very easy process, very fast. Uh, fantastic. And we want to uh, definitely thank all of our listeners for taking time to participate in today's session. And thanks a lot to our guest expert, Jerome Buteau. We really appreciate uh, your giving us your expertise today. Uh, you can get more information from Acronis at uh, acronisinfo.com. You can also find them on Twitter at acronis underscore virtual. Yeah, so my email would be jerome.butos, so my first name, dot my last name, at acronis.com. All right, with that, uh, we want to thank you for participating and look forward to you tuning in next time on the Drobo Broadcast Network. Thanks, everybody, for joining.